Tammy Harrison and welcome to another episode of Mix. Now, LA's Chinatown has always been a paradise for food and drink lovers. And today we are visiting a landmark venue that was established in 1868. And this place used to be a hotspot for celebrities like Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland and Gary Cooper. Now, today this craft cocktail bar serves exquisite drinks with a little old time Chinatown flair mixed with some Asian flavors. So let's go mix up some cocktails at General Lee's. General Lee's is a historic bar where we serve apothecary style cocktails. We have great music and it's a place where people can enjoy a classic drink in a classic venue. Apothecary style cocktails are a little bit more medicinal based, so we tend to use a lot of herbs, spices, we do our in-house bitters, tinctures. We source a lot of ingredients from Eastern flavors, per se, and we definitely have a medicinal feel to some of our cocktails. All right, everybody, I am in General Lee's, and this is Garrett, and you are gonna whip up something for me now. What is it? It's a cocktail called the General 75. General 70, okay, wait a minute. I've seen, I've seen the menu, that is not on the menu. It's true, this is actually, uh, this is a cocktail that was on our first cocktail menu when we first opened. In 1868? <laughs> no, oh. <laughs> three years ago. Oh, okay. Um, and we're, we're going to be bringing it back on our uh, fall and winter menu as well. So. Okay, so this is a bit of a secret drink that's sort of off menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so why is it called General 75 then? Um, the 75 part actually refers to a cocktail known as the French 75. Originated in World War One, which mm -hmm. was the first recipe appeared in around 1915. It was traditionally cognac mixed with champagne, mm -hmm. and uh, they said that it gave gave you the kick of a 75 millimeter howitzer. And this is kind of our little riff on it. So we take gin and we steep it with a little bit of hibiscus tea. Hence Love the uh, hibiscus tea. Red with the less drank tons of it in color. Egypt. Keeps you cool. And then we're gonna do a scotch of lemon juice. Oh, wait, this is all in house as well? Yeah, we uh, we procure the tea, we let it steep with the gin for a few days, mm -hmm. and we strain it off. We I mean, don't grow the tea here though, right? You probably get that <laughs> yeah. out the door here in Chinatown. Yeah, it's like it's like, two, it's like a two minute walk. Okay. Yeah, very close. But you steep it yourself. Mm -hmm. There yeah. you go. We, right. House steeped tea. Okay. And then before we do that, we're going to take our cocktail glass, we're gonna rim the top with a little bit of lemon juice. And then we've got this nifty lavender. Basically, we take uh, dried lavender in a mortar and pestle and turn the lavender into a bit of a powder. And is that sugar or is that salt? Sugar and uh, lavender, no salt. So but it looks sugary, you can't, you can't blame me for... It's true. If somebody saw that, they would assume that was salt. Well, yeah, and I actually have also never had a drink with sugar around the rim. I've only had it with salt, so this should be interesting, and also lavender. Yeah, adds a savory, nice touch lavender to the Lavender is usually in a pouch. And it's usually in, you know, in a room and makes the, you know, bathroom smell nice. Turns that nice deep red. Yeah, it's beautiful. And to finish it, we're going to make it a little effervescent by adding some Prosecco. And then we're going to garnish it a twist of lemon. And there oh, we and go. then you drop it in. Yep, and that's okay. the General 75. All right. To the General. Let's try this. Mm. I feel like the crunch of the sugar with this. Mm -hmm. This is actually really, really good. You did good, my man. Well, thank you. Cheers. This is delightful. Bottoms up. Cheers, everybody. General 75. Thank you very much, Gary. You're welcome. This is yummy. There's so much to tell about General Lee's. I'm really fortunate to be part of a family-run restaurant that started in 1868 in Los Angeles. My great-grandparents came here. Um, we first were established on a little street off Alameda called March Assault Street. And then when Union Station was built, we had to move out of the way. So by 1938, we broke ground here, which is known as Central Chinatown. So fortunately, our family has been known as the first Chinese restaurant in Los Angeles and to this day we hold this historical landmark and it's part of our rich history. I'm going to be making the Chinatown Syndrome which is basically just an embittered version of an old-fashioned. Um, we're going to use three of my favorite things which is uh, coffee in the form of a cold brew demerara syrup, a little Amaro um, which we'll get to, it's cream sherry and rye whiskey. So 
First step is just a little bit of this cold brew Demerara syrup that we make in-house. Just like your sugar for an old fashioned, but it's gonna bring out the coffee. Speaking of coffee, Chinar uh, 70, it's an overproof uh, digestif, has quite a bit of uh, coffee flavors to it, but it's made with many herbs, artichoke being actually one of the main constituents. So we're gonna add that. We're gonna add a little cream sherry, just a fortified wine from Spain. So just half an ounce of that. And what's an old fashioned without some whiskey? This is uh, James E. Pepper. Um, it's 1776 bonded, so it's 100 proof. It's nice and spicy and nice and hot. So we are going to uh, build this just like a regular old fashioned. Oop. And add a little chunk of uh, hand cut ice. It'll keep the uh, drink diluted to a minimum, but still chill it. And it also looks really pretty. Good, so we'll let that sit for a second. Let it cook, as we say. And then we're going to prep a little swath of orange, peel, express the oils over it, give it a nice nose. There you have it, the Chinatown Syndrome. Our music and entertainment varies depending on the day. We can have anything such as live jazz on Tuesdays. We have live music during the weekdays. Weekends, we'll have DJs playing, you know, all the greatest indie tunes, hip hop, soul, funk. But during the week, it's generally a little more vibey and loungy, but the weekends definitely tends to be a little more raucous, you could say. Next cocktail we're going to be making is a cocktail called The Mistress. It's kind of a Manhattan variation. We're going to use one and a half ounces of rye whiskey, which kind of stands up a little more in my opinion. Some people like them with bourbon. I'm a big fan of rye myself. This is a uh, sweet vermouth. I'm going to use a little bit of Amaro. This is a uh, Verna. It's a Sicilian Amaro. Uh, one of the weird things about Amaros is they normally don't really tell us what's in them. Um, so I can't really tell you. A whole lot about what's actually going on in there. And we're gonna use a little bit of orange bitters. Just gonna get a quick stir. So in stirring cocktails that are served up, it's important to make sure they're properly diluted. The Chinatown cinnamon that we had before is of a similar style and it's served on a large rock just to serve the same purpose. Since we don't have a large rock, we're putting in this cocktail glass. It's much more important to make sure that dilution is done before it's served. So what we're gonna do after it cooks a little bit is we're actually gonna dilute it with one cracked ice cube. Crack with a serving spoon. Then give it a quick turn. From there, strain it to our cocktail glass. We're gonna garnish this with an expressed and rested orange peel. Squeeze the top, it's like a miniature oil spill. They say one drop of oil can cover thousands of square miles or hundreds, I'm not sure. Um, same principle applies here. And the peel. And here we go, this is the mistress. What would I like my guest experience? I would like them to come in, have a craft cocktail that they can't find anywhere else. Uh, listen to great music and enjoy the space for what it is because there's a lot of rich history that you can experience just by sitting down having a cocktail with some friends and you know having a great time. So we have a lot of Polynesian themes here as well so we're no strangers to tiki. Um, this is our riff on a little tiki variation of a Hemingway daiquiri. Um, obviously with a twist it's going to be called the blush crush. So first things first Use a little fresh lime juice. And this is an equal parts drink, so everything is gonna be three quarter ounces. Then we have a little Aperol, which you're normally used to in a spritz. It's a nice, bright, citrusy cordial. And I'm gonna use a Pomplamousse Rosé, which is a wine-based macerated grapefruit spirit. Super fresh and refreshing. And we're gonna finish 
because what tiki isn't right with a rum, with 110 proof agricole rum, and agricole is different from normal rum in that it's actually from the French West Indies. It's made from fresh sugarcane, a lot like cachaça, where most other rums are made from molasses. So it's got a nice funk to it. And it's 110 proof, which doesn't hurt. So I'm gonna ice this up. Give it a thorough shake, break it up. There you have it. Blush Crush. Cheers. I feel like we're at the vanguard of a really progressive movement in Old Town Chinatown right now. And that's a really, really exciting time that we can offer something new to the community, yet still pay an homage to something very old and historic with integrity. I feel that that's something that isn't really readily available to a lot of places. Garrett, what are we making? We make a cocktail called The Heaven. It's uh, a cocktail we like to give to people when they, they come in if they've never been here before. And it's they need easy. a bit of heaven. Oh, totally. You know? it, it works. It yeah. works very well. Well, I'm excited. What do I need? Shifton. There you go. OK. And a jigger. So we're clearly going to be shaking something. So this is going to be a one and a half ounce pour. This guy is already set up for that. So you just have to fill this up with gin and dump it into the tin. To the B-R-I-N. No poem All intended, right. I'm sorry. OK, it's fine. We're a humor for show. Get it. Yeah. Boom. All right, and then uh, this is a green tea cordial. You're going to do the same amount. Is this in-house? Uh, yes, so we brew green tea. We mix it with uh, lime juice and a little bit of sugar. Ooh. And uh, it's just shaken and strained on the rocks. And OK. So it's going to be a little it's sweet and sourish? Yes, it's uh, it's designed to be super approachable. So if you like bitter cocktails or sweet cocktails, it's kind of designed to be a crowd pleaser cocktail, essentially. Piece of heaven, so, basically. Yep. Then All we right. put some ice in there. Okay. You ready for that some pudding? A Got full it? scoop? Uh, yes. Like that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's not right. That's good. Oh, one went to the side. Ice melt. There you go. Cool. Ice. good there. All right. And shake time. Shake it. That's how I get my daily workout, you see. If I can figure out how to do it with my legs, it would be even better. But I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't gotten there yet. Should That's be good. sufficient, yeah. One more. So good luck. A rocks glass here. OK, no, I see, I'm always afraid of that. That's, that's the bit I still the need to. The trick is to shake it like this and not like this. Well, thanks for telling me after I'd shaken it. Now you're gonna strain it into there with the strainer. All right. All right. Oh, you got this. So, okay, my my portions were on point. They were. I just say. Are we gonna put some ice in here? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Thought I did something wrong. Yeah, we like to put ice in afterwards because if we if we pour it over the ice, even in that short duration of time, it's going to dilute. So it's not going to pop as much. So if you wait till the very last second uh -huh. to put ice in, and then you just give it to the customer, it's going to taste more bright and refreshing. Oh, see? Learn yeah. something new. Well, we'll see if your measurements are right. Ooh. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll probably fit one more in there, but it's good. Yeah. And then a lime wheel. A lime wheel. Just tuck it into the side. Tuck it in the side. And that's like your that? heaven. Yeah. That's it? That's my heaven? That's your heaven, darling. Let me be the judge of my heaven. Mm -hmm. Mmm. Refrescante. <laughs> it's good. It's actually really good. It's very refreshing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste very alcoholic, though. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem we found. It gets, uh, it gets... It gets funny people, real quick. People really like it a lot. Yeah, you can quaff that. It gets funny real quick in yeah. here. That's a quaffable adult beverage. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Bottoms up, everyone. Cheers. All right, everyone. That is a wrap here at the Historic General Lee. But... Are you excited about the next place we're going? I know I am. So, don't you go anywhere.
So having a British dad and also having spent my teens growing up in England, we were never far from a good old English pub. So I'm feeling right at home today here in Van Nuys, California at a local brewery who specialize in real British ales. Let's go check out McLeod L Brewing Company. Cloud Ale Brewing Company is a humble little brewery in the neighborhood of Van Nuys in North LA. We established two and a half years ago. We're a quarter mile from the courthouse. And I'm dying to do this special where we offer a, you know, drown your sorrows after paying your ticket. We're a small microbrewery, seven barrels, just 217 gallons. We have a wonderful tasting room, which you can see behind me, which is open seven days a week. And uh, that's where we sell most of our beer right now. My husband, Alistair, he really helped me get this going. I couldn't have even considered doing something like this without him. I didn't immediately agree to it, but she, she said, I'll name it after your grandfather. We've really created not only a brewery, but a wonderful place for the locals to hang out. And it's just a great community space. We actually use our brewery for a lot of different things, like darts and games, art classes, and all kinds of things. But we've also created a British ale oasis in a very unlikely location. I'm the head brewer here. I'm in charge of all the, the brewing operations. We do a range of uh, traditional English cask ale and uh, more contemporary American style draft beers as well. In general, the brewing process, we will start with the barley malt primarily, and then we will crack that very roughly. We'll take hot water, mix it with that, and starch breaks down into sugar. We take that sweet sugary juice, boil it with hops for a period of time, cool it down, put yeast into it, and it turns into beer. Brewing process will take about four hours here in the brew house. And then it's about 10 to 14 days in a steel tank. Basically, it's a not so cold beer and a not so fizzy beer. And smooth and goes down easy. A good working man's beer. The kind of beers you can actually have at lunchtime. So I'm here now with Josiah and we are going to taste some ales. We're gonna drink some beer. I'm excited. So what are we going to be tasting? Uh, we're going to be tasting our Midnight Walk, which is our dark mild. It's very traditional English English ale. Midnight Walk. Is this one of your one of your favorites or one of the more, more this popular is, ones Yeah, here? one of the ones that I drink a lot of here at the pub. It's very light in alcohol. It's only 3.4%, but it still has a lot of body and flavor to go behind it. It is actually very, very tasty. The thing that I notice about this is that it's not very carbonated. Yeah, you'll, right you'll notice that with all of our all of our cascales. Um, traditionally, the carbonation is much lower, and they're served at a slightly elevated cellar temperature. So instead of your standard 38 degrees that you get, you know, a normal craft beer at at a bar, these are served at uh, 51 51 degrees. So. And that's what my dad always says because my dad is British, and he always wonders about Americans drinking their beer so cold. Right. <laughs> And he doesn't understand. He always says it has to be room temperature. And so yeah, in the, in the aroma, you're going to get a lot of like caramel, just a little bit of roast. It smells really, really delicious, actually. This looks stronger than it actually tastes. Yeah, which it is looks kind dark, but it odd. tastes kind of light, but still kind of caramelly and toffee-like at the same time. Delicious, delicioso. Um, I say we go on to the next one. I'm excited for another one. I know, it sounds like I'm really greedy right now. It's like, okay, this is great, next. <laughs> no, it's actually very, very delicious. It's actually light and would go well with um, some fish and chips. So this is our Little Spree Yorkshire style pale ale. So this is a very straightforward beer. It's basically just nothing but our, our imported base malt that we use. And then uh, to that, we add just a little bit of, you know, unmalted flaked barley to it to give it this nice froth on top. It tastes a little citrusy. You're absolutely right because <laughs> um, in the, through the mid part of the boil, we'll add some of our Kent Golding's hops, which is where you get that little bit of citrus component. Uh -huh. And then at the very end, we use our Styrian Golding hops, which gives you, rounds it out with a little bit of herb and spice. I like it, it's very crisp. It's actually got a great aftertaste too, because it's, it's got a very fresh, so you just, you're just walking away, just, you're just wandering off. I feel tempted to jump behind the bar 
and pour myself a pint myself, to be honest. Oh, well, welcome back to the show. Here we go. We have our Better Days American Pale Ale here. Better Days. American Pale Ale is definitely one of my favorite styles to drink, so when we decided to do one here, we wanted to take, make a really good American style pale ale, but we wanted to uh, stay true to kind of our more traditional English roots. What's actually interesting to me is this is the most carbonated out of all of them. Yeah, so this is, um, again, this is a, a draft beer versus the cask ales, and so this is gonna have a much higher level of carbonation. Do we have one more in there? I mean, we got another. Yeah, we sure do. We've got another 14 to go, really. All right, this is gonna be a doozy. Are you disappearing again? Here we go with our last one. This is our Imperial Oatmeal Stout. Why are you serving it in a glass like this? This is a very dark, very strong, very intense beer. So when you serve it in a, in a sniffer type glass, you can really get all of the aromas out of it. And uh -huh. it's a lot better for sipping something that's so, so intense. To be honest, I've never actually tasted anything like this before. This literally is a mixture between chocolate, coffee, beer. It has kind of that deep, dark, Kind of dried fruit character. Yes! It's a great dessert beer. Some of our customers love taking this beer home and smoking cigars with it. This is really amazing. My taste buds have tasted something <laughs> new for the first time in a while. So if I have to grade them, still love it, obviously, but this comes in in um, place four. Four, then I would say three. That would be my second one, and that's my first one. This would be my lineup. Thank you. Thank you so much for Wonderful, thank you. for letting me taste all these. Thank you. So we have kind of a fun way of naming our beers. Alistair and I are both bagpipers. And I always had this idea that we would perhaps name the, the beers after bagpipe tunes. And that's turned out to be a really fun thing for us. Anytime I come across a tune name that might make a great beer name, I put it on the list, and then when we have a new beer that needs naming, we kind of go down our list and see if one would fit. We had some patrons who started coming in and asking for custom mixes of beers, and a lot of times the names work out really great for that too. So for example, we had two beers. One was called Jar of Porter, and the other beer was called Jackie Tar. So people called asked for a Jar of Tar. One of my favorite ways to develop new beers is to go back and look at periods of time and go through old brewing records and kind of recreate, you know, beers the way they would have been brewed back then, as close as we can now with, uh, with the ingredients they have available to us. Will kind of lend itself to a name sometimes, or sometimes we'll just have a name that's so great we'll just find a beer that fits and brew that. <laughs> basically do anything we want here, as long as we still keep true to our roots of traditional English brewing tradition. Okay, so we have kind of a well-known patron here who is actually a pig. Her name is Rosie Von Bristlebutt. One of the things that we have here that's kind of unique is that we have peanuts in the shell and people can throw them on the floor. Rosie just goes around rifling through the peanut shells all evening with her little tail wagging. She's kind of like the unofficial mascot of McLeod Ale. We have uh, a fun thing called buy a friend a beer. Basically, you can come in here, think of a friend who you would like to introduce to our beer, buy a pint, and their name will go on the board, and when they come in at a later date, they can claim their beer. We have a huge list of names of people waiting to come in, including some celebrities. I believe Barack Obama is, you know, we're waiting for Barack to walk in, because we know that he loves beer. I mean, he brewed beer in the White House, for heaven's sake, so I think he's a good candidate to come by and experience some of our ale. Okay, guys, I am now here with good old Stephen. Now, Stephen, I've heard that people actually, patrons, not people, patrons, actually come in and create their own beer. They can, they can mix and match and create their own drink, right? Yep. So that's what you're going to be doing for me right now. We're going to be mixing a couple of things. Yep. What are we going to be mixing? Well, first we're going to start off with our version of uh, black and tan. First starts off with a half pint of our pale ale. And today we're going to be using our porter on cask. So it's going to create a really nice uh, blend between some dark malty beer and a little bit of a lighter, you know, refreshing hoppy beer. So this is already mixed together? Is that what this is, a, a creation? I'm going to be mixing it by hand. So uh, ah. by using the spoon, it's going to break the surface to uh, so it allows it to layer uh, half and half, uh, which is another way uh, you, you actually order a black and tan. It's also called a half and half too as well. I have to ask you about the spoon. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's going on here? 
why does it need to be bent? Uh, so you can place it into the glass a little bit more efficiently and it lays right over the top and it just is easier for you to hold as you're pouring the oh, dark beer. So it just flows over the top? It flows over the top rather than going into one specific area, which ah. allows it to uh, layer much more efficiently. So it distributes a lot. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay, so what do we have in here now? The bottom is? The bottom's our pale ale called Better Days. The top is our... Uh, that was one of my faves. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's one right here. Uh, the top is our uh, the Black Bear. It's a, it's a English style uh, session porter. Okay, and this does not get mixed together? Uh, eventually, as you're drinking it, it will, it will mix, uh, but it starts off layered that way. And then as you're drinking, it starts off malty, and then, then the pale ale's gonna come through and it's gonna end very refreshing and, and nice and dry. All right, well, let's see how this ends. Okay, let's try this. Cheers. I like it. And it kind of looks like a Diet Coke right now. <laughs> Doesn't taste like one, though. I can definitely assure you that. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. All right. See, my question is, what would excite me, to be totally honest, is if I could make my own little Tammy concoction. Can I do that? Yeah, of course, of course. Um... Commonly, people just you know pick two different beers because we use a lot of the same yeast strains. So if you do mix two, they, you can create your own concoction, and the beer sometimes can turn out pretty good. All right. Well, let's swap places. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna mix this in here for yep. now. All right. So you can if you no, hold that's it. That's all I want from this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. Where are you going next? I think a little bit of little spree. I did like that. What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Like that? Oh, like this? Yep. Just like that. It's where all the nice uh, aromatics come out of. See, beautiful coloring, mm -hmm. if I may say so myself. And um, I think we now need to mix a little bit of this in here. So this is the Tammy Harrison concoction. Looks interesting. It's got a great color, yeah. It's got, yeah, you think? All right. Let's see how, Let's see how this goes down. It's actually really good. Taste that. Let me try it. I think I did a good job. I think we just got found ourselves a new one to put put up on the uh, on the menu. It's actually really good. It's super refreshing. It's malty, but you know it's got a little citrus and sweetness yeah, to it. Right? It's kind of cool. Now, I might have another sip. You have another sip. I think that's actually you know what? It's a, I'm just surprised myself. Now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, amazing stuff. Beer to me is. A wonderful elixir. Alcohol is wonderful. It's been around forever. But beer is the most diverse, awesome beverage that one can consume. So I support beer. Beer definitely brings people together. In opening this type of brewery where we serve a lot of British style ales, it's been a wonderful experience for me to watch that kind of community develop right here in Van Nuys. According to William Shakespeare, for a quart of ale is a dish for a king. All right, guys, that is a wrap here from me at the McLeod Ale Brewing Company. There is a little pig running around here, which I'm going to find in a minute. But in the meantime, I will drink a couple more of these. Hope you enjoyed yourself today. Until next time, I'm Tammy Harrison. Cheerio.